Hello? Hey, hey, is anybody home today? This is an unannounced live where I'm going to just talk about something I was thinking about that I feel like could really help people. A major thing that you could put into play and have in the side of your mind as an always go to no matter what's going on. So we'll wait for a couple people to hop on. I have a, a couple little random notes to share with you, but let me know if you're on. Chilling on a dirt road, lay back swerving like a George Jones. <laughs> Smoke blowing out the window and green drinks sitting in the console. Do, 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 do. Hey friends, how are y'all? Laura in the house? Annie, hey friends. Y'all think I can't see, but <laughs> these comments are microscopic. Hello, how are y'all? So here we are in January, which is Here Comes the Sun. And we talked about this. Why is it Here Comes the Sun 2021? Because you have recognized the fact that you are the sun. You are the catalyst for change. And you're the person and the thing in your life that always remains steady and the same. You. You're the common denominator. You're the person that's got to bring the new to you. Bring it up. Pull it out of you. Make it happen. Keep on churning it back up when you don't feel like it. You know, going back to your plan. When your plan is steady and you're shaky. It's steadfast and you're flaky. It knows what to do when you don't want it as bad as you thought you do and did, right? So I want to talk about that. And so in the second week in Here Comes the Sun 2021, the Raw Reset, which is my 30 day, it's like an immersion program. And what we're talking about really and what we are working through this week is eating out, friends and family, dealing with it during the chaos, really looking at, and I was talking about today, what is your base go-to streamlined plan? When, guess what goes on in the world? Chaos. Shall we take it back to the last year? I mean, this year already? Whatever is in your inbox, what's going on, whether it could be the rise of the tide or the low of the tide, the high and the low, the good and the bad. It could be celebrations. It could be something devastating in your life. But we've got to remember this. If you have spent decades, a long time rebuilding your health, or you're at the beginning of that, or you're just starting to see the outskirts of you losing your health, might I lovingly suggest this mindset. Nothing is more important than your health. Put your health first on the list. Put you on the list because if you lose your health, nothing will matter but you regaining your health. It is not selfish, it's selfless. It's you wanting to be the best you can be so you can give love and your special light in this world that you won't be able to do otherwise. You know, your authentic beauty and truth can come shining through when you are feeling good and in pristine health. So what I was thinking about with that this month, and my group has been seeing this, is I am getting married on the 23rd of February. Bam, see, <laughs> all of a sudden, and we're eloping and we're going to Charleston and we are, I'll tell you all the a little details about that, but um. I'm sure I'll be showing clips on Instagram and all that, and but uh, we're having just a short getaway. And But what I was really thinking about is I will be moving from the cottage home of love and light into the mountain home, into Greg's home, where guess what? It's not a land of silence there. I live in silence. You hear the dehydrator on the other side of the wall, but I live with my own thoughts, my own patterns, my own strategic plan, my own stove, though it doesn't, it doesn't get used, it has six cutting boards on it. That stove and oven, microwave, dishwasher have never been used. Because I don't cook food, I'm here by myself, you see. I'm going into a different land. It will be a land of love and light because I will bring that, right? It's different. Is it going to be difficult? It's going to be different. And in the middle of rearranging and moving, it will seem like chaos. But that's what it takes to create the new beautiful things in your life to have expansion and not hide in, it's like a retracted state, a state of being stagnant when it's time to expand. 
But what that's really made me think is when I have traveled with him many times or been there and we're gone all day, I must plan for myself. Other people are not going to understand the lifestyle that you're living. Even if you've been living it a long time and they've been with you, unless you're doing that all the time and you're practicing that, you don't understand. People really won't understand. So, hey friends, so you plan for yourself. But what I was really talking about this morning are what are like your four corners? What are your pillars of health that you must, not you should, you must do every day to feel good? Because when you get your health in check and you start feeling the very best you can vibrant all the time, every day you know how you're gonna get up feeling. You know you can make plans because you can trust your body not only physically, but mentally. You're in a mentally calm, uplifted space. I didn't live like that before, but now that I do, nothing is gonna take that away from me. And you really can get this mindset. What are the main things that you need to cover? Once you start feeling so good, you will recognize the fact when you don't have quite enough greens, when you didn't balance your fat exactly, when you under ate, when you over ate on fat, when you maybe have fruit and it was not balanced, maybe you had too much fruit juice, maybe you had too many dried nuts and seeds, different things like that, you will notice a big difference. And once you know how good it feels to feel vibrant and pristine, you can't not know. And nothing else will feel as good. Nothing. So how can you keep that feeling Get to that feeling, first of all, by a plan and recognizing the fact that it is going to be a journey every day as you're getting to the new patterns in your life. It will seem difficult, but it's just different, right? Until you do it long enough that it becomes your new ritualistic patterns, and it's, it's the easiest thing you do, you know? So anyway, but once you get there, what is it you need to do to stay there? What are the main things? How do you monitor your, do you keep a journal? Do you monitor your water? What are your base, what's your base simplistic plan to cover all bases? So you know you're always going to do that. You can expand upon that. You can make it more elaborate. You're doing a video. You're showing a look at this new crackers. I'm making these new crackers right now in the dehydrator and they're basically the sprouted lentils. They've got no fat or anything and just some seasoning and tomatoes and I'm trying those. Well, is that my base plant? No, because I, in the base situation, you won't always have a dehydrator with you, right? You won't necessarily always have a high-speed blender. So think about that, and I'm not talking about like you're on a camping journey. I'm just talking about maybe you're traveling. Maybe you go to friends and family or the different things, but what are your base needs to keep you feeling great? And I wanted to just kind of go over you with you in my mind what mine are because I, I think that it could really put in perspective to you how easy this could be for you. It is not that I have some special willpower that I've been doing this all these years. It's just I will never forget from where I came of being so sick, you know, physically, mentally, losing my hair, all, all my health was just going down the drain. I'll never forget that. And now, no food that's not my food, toys, recreational activities, which is what most people live off of, no toys or toxic drinks or toxic thoughts, I would think, ever seems better than feeling great feels. You know, and I don't have to think, well, I wish I could have that. I don't want for any other food besides my own. When we get married, we're, um, so we're getting married at the Wentworth Mansion, which is like on the Haunted Mansion Trail now. But anyway, there's a thing on the top. It's a curved dome on the top. It's called a cupola, and I hope I pronounced that right. But anyway, it's got the best scene in all of downtown Charleston, the scenery, and we're getting married up there. It's kind of like you think of a bell tower, and there's like a walking balcony around it, and there's this spindle staircase up and all that. But also, we're staying in, in the suite there. We, we just got to say two nights because we chose that instead of like another diff, more common hotel we're staying there. So anyway, the night we get, the night we get married at 6 o'clock, then we will have a dinner there. And it's like a four-course dinner or something. Okay, how much of that do you think I'm going to be able to eat? None of it. Probably none of it. Come here. Come here. 
It was just me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. The friends can't cooperate. <laughs> You're barking. So anyway, um, am I thinking, well, I wish I could eat that food. No, I eat to thrive. I'm more interested in how I'm going to feel after the meal, right? How I'm going to feel the next day for, for one of our honeymoon days. How am I going to feel after the meal? I don't think, oh, I wish I could have that. I just don't. It is that easy. And you might be thinking, well, I don't want to give up all my favorite foods. You can change. Your taste buds can change. Your mental outlook on this can change. And you can begin to do different. It can become your lifestyle, not just a diet, not a quick fix, you know, not doing it to lose weight. Though You're doing a pristine health plan and then weight loss is a side effect, along with all the other uplifting aspects of true health. But I've really been thinking about that. What are the base things? When I'm moving my, my things there, you all that know me will recognize the fact of what kind of chaos that seems to me. But zoom out, take a zoom out perspective of your life and look at if you're going through something right now, through chaos, if there's something in your inbox, how do you want to zoom out and see yourself behaving in that situation? What plan can you put in place that all you have to do is plug and play and on the other side, you'll be a better version of yourself. You will have not lost your health you will not have lost your balance no matter what. And when you do that and have this base core plan, the pillars that cover your health, you can go anywhere and do anything, right? And that's a big deal. We can't always, or most of the time, even realize what's fixing to come at us or always plan everything around us. We just can't. But what we can plan is our reaction to it, you know? And not trying to change the world, change others, but how can you monitor and manage yourself so you're the best version of yourself in this world? But thinking about that chaos in this world and um, something always in your inbox, stressful situation, looking at the other side. I'm fixing to get to this kind of base thing I'm talking about for you. And this may look different to you. Maybe you could utilize this if you're a person, maybe, I don't know what you do, maybe you're a carnivore eater or you're, you know, you're just trying to have, shimmy the meat out of your diet or you're trying to get the processed foods out of your diet or, and you're trying to not have salt, oil, sugar, whatever it is for you, we're the same, you and I. And you might be saying, well, how could we be the same if you're just saying there's carnivores or there? Because we are all trying to cultivate the best plan that we see for ourselves, coming from the knowledge base that we have acquired through our personal life and get to the next best version of ourselves. That's how we are the same, you know? So anyway, zooming out, thinking about how you will be on the other side. How will you be? I thought yesterday I, I took my first big load of clothes up there to Greg's. And he has tried to clean out one side of, he has cleaned out one side of his closet and I won't live there till after we're married. But I was putting those things in there and I watched myself from the zoom out perspective, breathe through that. I watched myself and you all that don't deal with that type of thing, you're probably thinking, what is she talking about? I am very streamlined about the things I do. And I'm saying to him now, in the kitchen, where are, where are my things going to go? Where is a space for, you know, we're looking at that. And he's working with that. Greg knows me very well. And, um, and y'all are like cheerleading him, whoop, whoop, that he's dealing with that. <laughs> he has his own things, okay? <laughs> but really, thinking about that, will, will my spices and herbs and things and lacuma powder, do those go beside Doritos? I don't know, but I know this. Nobody else is going to try to share my food because no one eats that there but me. <laughs> right? And, you know, starting to add a little bit of sprouts or microgreens on top of his. I don't know what he's eating that night. Ribeye and mashed taters. 
Maybe he had a salad with that and microgreens. He didn't have that before. That's his next better thing, you see? And we're the same like that. Really looking at core qualities in people, oftentimes I hear people say, how can you date, I've heard this many times over the years, with many different men that you all have seen over these, this decade that I've been single. How can you date someone that eats meat or doesn't have your lifestyle or doesn't have, well, I've said this so many times, what if I was in a partnership or being with a raw vegan? Well, first of all, are we going to see the same, same things eye to eye? Maybe they are constantly all day long with the fruit juice and the, the dates and the nuts and seeds. And, the, you know, maybe they're all with the processed raw vegan treats. That's not the same thing as I do. Was that going to be okay? We only have that in common. Or, for example, they, they eat raw vegan, but... Now, when they get frustrated, they slam into me going down the hall and cuss me. They, they are rude to my children or all these different things. They have some really skewed, in my view, core qualities, but they eat raw vegan. You see what I mean? Look beyond that. Look at the connections you can make with every person in this world. There's something you can connect with, you know? So, anyway... As we're looking at that, I'm really thinking about this for you all. You know, for years, I did this while I was married to the raptured one. And I almost died during those years. And this is not about him or to say anything negative, but he didn't understand. He did not try to understand or he would step over me crying, almost dying in the floor. And it was during those years that I developed strength of realizing no one was coming. No one was coming to save me. No one was coming to understand. No one was coming to make me do it or care if I do it or do it with me. No one was coming. And it dawned on me. No one has to. Everything you need is already inside. You are strong enough like that, did you know? So really, when you start changing your mindset on these things, you really can look at, you can do this anywhere, anytime. So what is that base thing you're going to do? And I'm saying to Greggy, you know, when we are, I've said this when we're traveling, well, what time am I going to bed? I, I have a sleep schedule, right? It, where is my juicer, blender, all the different things? Where does that live? Let's look, can we talk through that? I'll feel better if we talk through that. And he's perfectly happy. A lot of these things that you feel like other people are not okay with, it's really just something going, that's just a struggle in your head. And a lot of times it's an excuse we can be making to where we're thinking, well, you know, other people just don't want to deal with that. Or other people think I'm weird. Other people really aren't thinking about that. They're thinking about their dang self. They really don't care what you're doing. You know, it's just like his children. He has three teenagers that live there. They're there one week and they're gone one week. And okay, they don't understand what I do, but they, they're open to, you know, loving me. And so anyway, what are the base things? What are your base needs? So let's look at a base plan right quick. And I'm not going to be this winded on this, but um, zooming out, looking at how you want to be. And you might think, well, this all seems confusing. When I'm working with my group, I, I have to always be mindful that I have veterans of this lifestyle in there, alumni of my group, and brand new people that I can feel like a fire hydrant of information coming at them. And we're always going back. What's the base? What's the base? And we're expanding in this area. But what's the base? What is the streamlined simplicity of your plan? your go-to, your always, your base, right? So I want to tell you what mine looks like. Sometimes, for example, I could be growing uh, all the microgreens. I could have four to six flats in that cabinet right there, right? Other times, I might be just growing sprouts in my now jars, much more simplistic. And other times, 
I'm adding in the extra minerals like that, an extra nutritional punch from a wheatgrass juice powder in my water. I often do that traveling because do I really have the microgreens I'm growing? No. What about the sprouts? Not necessarily. Now, usually you can buy a pack of those at the grocery store for less than $3, you know? And that's an easy way to do that and get started if you want to add in living food, which could very well be your next level. Giving you stamina and balance in your life, mental clarity, sprouts and microgreens, living food are a miracle food, right? The most nutritionally dense food on the planet. But yet it's, it's what most people aren't even aware of. They're oblivious. But you could have that every day, even if you're just picking up things at the grocery as you go along. Maybe you're staying somewhere else for the week or you're traveling, whatever you're doing, or your kitchen's in repair. You know, when I moved to this house two years ago, do you all remember that I sold my refrigerator? Because the refrigerator in here is specific to the cottage. It's very small and my other refrigerator wouldn't fit here. So I had ordered one. Well, I saw my other one right away on Craigslist, and you should have seen us, try, me and these three, what were like teenage boys, trying to get this thing <laughs> down the back stairs. I don't know how they got that fridge in there, but anyway. Well, then Lowe's called me and said, yeah, we thought it was on its way, but it's on back order. It's not going to be here for three and a half weeks, and I'm thinking. So I now have no refrigerator for three and a half weeks, and do you know I function just fine? I bought the things I wanted to eat that day, and I ate them that day. And it was fine, and I really loved it because it was just show, you know, showing how I do it while I go through it, just like many of you all, right? So anyway, expanding on, just like I told you, with the wheatgrass juice powder. Somebody's going to ask me what type I like in that, and the type I like is by Dr. Berg, wheatgrass juice powder. This is another talk, but there's a big difference in wheatgrass juice powder and wheatgrass powder because wheatgrass powder has been, yes, ground and dehydrated at low temperatures in most cases, not all. There's a big difference in those like most things, but we really can't digest grass, okay? So what you're having in there when it's grass powder, it's a lot of filler. So you might think, oh, well, this one is cheaper well, you're buying a lot of filler, so of course it is. But when they have juiced it and then dried that juice at low temperatures and ground it into a powder, then you have in there liquid green gold, the powder turned into liquid. That's everything you need right there and no fillers. So I've researched that a lot. Dr. Berg wheatgrass juice powder. You can find that on drberg.com and I, he, shows a lot of keto style food. Do not be offended when you see that. But I tell you what else I really like about him. Always talking about the minerals, the nutrients, bringing in the greens, bringing in the veggies, because he realizes people living on just meat or just fat, that's not where it's at, right? You have to have all the other things, right? So anyway, that's about the wheatgrass juice powder, but not to get off subject with that, but somebody will ask me, so anyway, when you're zooming out and you're looking at your simplistic plan, what does that look like? Okay, well, here is what it could look like for me, all right? So in the morning, I would typically have a lemon water or celery juice or possibly celery lemon juice or low glycemic green juice, but I would have that closer to my eating window. I typically eat 10 a.m. to about 5.30 p.m. I have some videos on intermittent fasting. I've been doing that a long time. You could see those on YouTube. Anyway, so, but let's say I don't have that. Typically, in your possession, you could have a lemon, all right? Get you a little lemon squeezer, that's easy, or a knife and cutting board, cut it, squeeze it in your water, drink it, bam. Then, for breakfast, lunch and snack, I always run the same thing. So typically for breakfast, and I'm, the amounts are going to depend on how many calories you need. You know, what is your expenditure of calories a day? What is your base metabolic rate? What activity are you adding into that? There's some equations to figure that out. Mine will not necessarily be yours, but typically I get from around 1,800 to typically 2,000 calories a day. Sometimes less and sometimes a little more, but it, it evens out to that. So anyway, for breakfast, I'm gonna have fruit, all right, and greens, and a little bit of chia seeds. 
I'm always going to have those chia seeds because they're every amino acid your body needs for building protein. Also, they're a warrior food. They have all the macros, so it's not just fat. So if you're a person who has a, a problem with fat, I eat fat every day. Though I maintain a lower fat, raw vegan existence. It's not really lower fat to me. It's adequate fat. It's everything I need and nothing I don't. But that little bit of chia seeds are all the macros, okay? Protein, carbs, and fat. I get about a half a tablespoon in my breakfast. Now, typically I would make a smoothie. I would have lots of berries, and then I would have fruit for a little more calorie dense experience, and I would have lots of greens. Typically, six to eight ounces, a lot, all right? Well, maybe I don't have a blender and I'm not gonna blend that into a smoothie. What I could do is just have, maybe I just picked up some washed greens at the grocery and they're in the bag and I'll pop that open and then I get, maybe the, the berries were more expensive there and just didn't look that good, so I get some bananas or mangoes. I'm gonna have the calories I need right there and I'm gonna put the chia seeds in the water, bam. You see? Now, that is very basic. You can do that stop at any grocery store. Greg, or frankly, any guy that I've been in a long-term relationship with, after a while, they started to understand, oh, well, she can do it anywhere. I'm not having to think, and, well, where can you eat? You know, I can almost go to any restaurant. If you plan, you can really think that through. So anyway, that's for breakfast. Lunch looks very similar. I'm gonna have greens. I'm usually gonna have a different kind of greens. I'm gonna have a base, more calorie dense, more sugar dense fruit, okay? Typically, I'm gonna have berries, a little bit of chia seeds and water. You see how that's going? Why I'm gonna have those greens in there is because greens make you lean. Greens give you minerals and greens are the cornerstone of my health. Greens and living food. Backed by energy from fruit, also backed by a wide variety of seasonally rotating vegetables and a adequate amount of raw plant fat. Rotated omega-3 to omega-6, three to six. I have a video called how much fat and what type of fat. So anyway, and it will talk to you about that, but lunch looks very similar, right? Later on, I'm gonna have a snack because I wanna stay ahead of the hunger curve. If I am on the go or I'm not really hungry, but I know I need calories right there so I don't become binge prone, then maybe I'll have a few dates. Maybe I wanted to say, say a 300 calorie snack. Let's say you wanted that. Well, if I wanted a small snack, I could have about four dates and about four stalks of celery. I could dice that up, having a little baggie and munch it on the way down the road. Furthermore, not even diced, munch it on the way down the road is a small snack, right? Or even smaller snack, you could have the dates or say raisins, a dried fruit like that. And then our banana leathers, if you brought that with you. Oh, and you could have the microgreens. Microgreens, really, they give you a satiation like nothing else and energy. If you wanted a larger snack and say you're at home and you're expanding yourself on that. So now for about that same calories, if they were small, let's, let's say they're medium size. You could have two apples and two small pears zip through a food processor. And so when you zip it through a food processor with the S blade, it creates like a, a juiciness on there from the juice and the fruit. You put that in a bowl, you put in a little warming spices or pumpkin spice, fall spices, raw vanilla bean powder, that kind of thing. You stir it in there, makes like this syrup. Then you have, have either romaines that you're scooping that in there or you're scooping it with celery and that's the perfect salty and sweet snack. So that's a larger example of that, do you see? Okay, then for dinner, so we're gonna have a snack. Then for dinner, I'm going to have greens. Now, my base plan is I'm gonna have greens and I'm going to have a fat at dinner and I'm going to have some seaweed. Why am I gonna do that? Because I need the iodine, I need the natural sodium in there and the minerals. So I'm either gonna have about a tablespoon and a half of Dulce Flex or about a tablespoon of wakame seaweed or a little sprinkle only of kelp granulars. Usually that's gonna go in my dressing. But let's say you just have, um, you have an avocado. Let's say you're going down the road. Nobody was gonna stop for dinner, no, okay. So you go in the grocery store, you get some romaine hearts already washed, you have avocado, and then you have your seaweed with you. These are the kind of things I would bring. Seaweed and um, 
your, your seaweed, a lot of time bringing a knife along is good, and your chia seeds, because you need to have those. You don't want to have to buy another bag. But anyway, that's even simplistic if you're traveling. We're just talking about base every day, but you could cut that avocado in half if that's the amount you eat, sprinkle on your little kelp, scoop it out, have a bite of that, and have a bite of your greens. There you go. I'm going to have the fat I need at night. I'm typically, if, I, if I'm at home, gonna stretch that out into either a dressing, a sauce, or a soup. Or maybe I put the fat in my raw crackers and I'm gonna utilize those. Maybe I'm on a little road trip or I'm going, I'm packing and I'm just not having much time. So I'm just gonna have all these greens and I'm gonna have a few of my crackers that have the fat in there and the seaweed. Do you see what I mean? But what are your base, what's your base plan? So again, lemon in the water, fruit and greens with the chia seeds for breakfast. Lunch, same. Snack, fruit, paired with greens, large or small. Dinner, greens, veggies. You cannot overeat on low starchy veggies and greens. It's physically impossible. A pound of those, it averages about 100 calories. You can't physically overeat. But you can certainly undereat on nutrients if you're not getting those things. So there we go, at dinner we have all the salad, this is so simplistic, but yet I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recipes of all the different ways you can do it that you would never be bored. But when you need to bring it back to the, the home base, there's stress, there's chaos, there's all the things that go on in life. What is your home base? Right? You could so easily have a raw nut butter on hand, and you could have a few greens or some celery and the nut butter, and you could have a little bit of the kelp sprinkled on there. It's as easy as that. Just remember that, bring it home to the base. Instead of letting your mind think these type of things that are really just you making an excuse, you looking for an excuse, instead of looking for ways to make it happen, if you get up the mindset of, this is my food and this isn't, here's what I want to be, now I'm gonna proceed with being that no matter what, no matter what, you will start seeing opportunities and not loopholes for ways out. You really will. You'll start seeing opportunities. What you seek, you'll find. What you look for grows. What you focus on grows. Focus on the way you can do it, you know? And how you'll feel after this meal. Zoom out and look at yourself. You might be going through a really, really hard time right now. That there really, there's no good outcome. But is it going to help you by doping yourself down with foods that make you feel toxic and lethargic? That make you have depression, anxiety, and rage? Or can you handle even the trickiest situations better when you're clean, clear, and bright? Everything's easier when you're clean, clear, and bright. And that doesn't mean it's gonna be a rainbow, obviously, you know? But everything's easier when you can think and you can function, and you know that you can trust your body when you wake up the next day, right? You know that no matter what new thing you're taking on, even if it doesn't work out, you can get back up because you're strong like that. You can start seeing yourself as a different person. You start making little promises to yourself and start showing up for those, the little things. And then you start seeing yourself as a person of integrity, you know? What do y'all think about that? It's so easy. It can be so easy for you to do it when you change your mindset. It's just like I was talking about detox this morning in the raw reset. And I was really talking about, you know, people often want to have like this answer. Well, well what do, what's the easy way for me to get over sugar? What can I have instead of? What's the easy thing to take, take, take it away? The easiest thing is to realize that this is temporary. And if you learn to do it while you go through it, let those cravings surge up and just do nothing. Do nothing. Were there things I talked about with detox that could help? Yes. There's colon cleanses and there's, there's different teas and there's massage and there's lymphatic movement and there's saunas and there's magnesium and there's Epsom salt bath and there, all the things. There's skin brushing. There's, but the main thing is learning that 
Yes? Oh, detox. I've been expecting you. Expect these scenarios to come up. Zoom out. How will you behave during those times? And when those times come, parent yourself to success because no one else is going to do that for you, you know? What do y'all think? What's your base plan? What is your base plan during times of chaos that you're going to hold to? The light is in and out. I hope it's not too dark in here. You know, a lot of times, Greg is open to eating a healthier diet. He's also oblivious to the need, actually, for him. We have to recognize the fact that people's truth comes from their personal experience in their life. And Greg has never had any of the issues I've had that stem from poor eating. And but he understands that when he runs now at 55, it's not the same as before. And he understands he has some inflammation and he understands. And you know, that's where you connect with people. When, when he could understand that some green juices could help flush that out. Some of these different components could help with things that are starting to bother him now. Connecting with people on whatever level that you all connect on, you know? Eating out like that. Um, we were in downtown Charleston this past weekend. We went on a day trip there and we went to see the cupola and just do some planning and all. And it was so cold down there, y'all. It's, of course, it's wintertime here in South Carolina, but the wind was so blustery. It was only about 40 anyway. I bet with the wind chill, it should have been in the teens, but it was just like cutting through your clothes. And we were going to find somewhere to eat. And I had left the soaked nuts in the car that I was going to have, I brought with me to have for my dinner. And we went in this place and Greg was wanting to have this she crab soup that he likes and you can get readily down there. And we went in one place and it, it didn't look that good. There was, he didn't like, he saw some she crab soup and he was looking for a little bit more chunky. But each place I'm looking at that and he's very open if I was to say, oh, they don't have anything, then he would be, okay, well, let's find somewhere else. He'd be the first one to say that. But we went in this little place and they had uh, lots of organic veggies and things, but I had this beautiful large salad and on there I just squeezed some lemon and lime Right and when I got back to the car, I munched on my soaked and drained Nuts that I was gonna eat with my dinner. I did not sit there and think I well I wish I didn't leave this lifestyle. I feel so privileged and so grateful now Grateful is the word from going through those things that almost killed me years ago. Because if I hadn't done that, I would not be in the health I am now. You know? I was never clean, clear, and bright before. And it took a lot of years and a lot of refining to really map out the personal things I do in my life to keep me healthy. And no matter what I'm doing, that will always come first. My health will come first. Always. Because if it doesn't, I can't be the best version of myself, and that's not good. That's not good enough. It's not the best version of me, you know? So thank you for coming over to the Cottage of Love and Light. And pretty soon, will I still do videos from there? Yes. Will I still do my program and YouTube? Yes. Will I still share my food? Yes. Uh, the teenagers could be in there. Should, could they try making some noodles? And I, I'd love for them to do that or not. I still eat that, you see? And it's really great. So you really can do it as you go through it. Remember who you are, decide what you wanna be, and proceed with being that, you know? Don't you wanna feel like your most beautiful, vibrant version? I don't remember thinking when I married the first time. And I was married a long time, 21 years. And for a long time, it was really good until it wasn't. But I really have thought through that all these years of how could I have been different? How could I have showed up different? 
what things could I learn from that to be different in another experience like that? And looking at the things I want now in my life, I never thought about those things before. I just went along with, with the mass thing that was going on. I was never clean and clear then, you know? But now I am. And when you become like that, you can start getting the things in your life that you want and creating the life you want, you know? So thank you for coming over, and I'll be seeing you soon. We'll chat again from here, and then I'll be seeing you from Asheville, North Carolina. Thank you.